Hello, my name is Joe, and I am attempting to listen to all of the episodes of the podcast Radio Ambiante. So I am about five years into the backlist. There are pre-NPR episodes, and I have not listened to those yet, but starting sometime in 2016, they joined forces with NPR, and so that is where I have started. So I'm actually into the 2021 episodes at this point. But I think today we are going to discuss the first four years, and then hopefully I will relatively soon have a video discussing the next four years, partially for evenness and partially because that is the amount that fit on one page. So as I've been listening through to all of the episodes, which has been wonderful, by the way, um, I get to hear you know, stories and accents and everything from all over Latin America, which I think is wonderful. So as I've been going through, I like star or like favorite every episode that I especially like. And then I went through and wrote down every episode that was starred. And I will have that list in the description box so that you can see all of the ones that made an impression on me while I was listening to them. But and additionally, from that list, I have now pared it down to ones that still are making an impression on me looking back on them. You know, I mean, it's only been like six months since I started doing this. But regardless, I think, you know, after listening to hundreds, probably at this point of episodes, it's um, impressive if they still are really, really clear in my mind. So we're just going to go through. I don't know how long this will take me to talk about all these episodes, but obviously I'm not going to talk about them in detail because I think you should listen to them. Just if you're not aware, there are transcripts for all episodes of Radio Ambulante on their website and there are English translations as well. So if you are more comfortable using those, that is an option. And there is also an app called Jive World, which is specifically dedicated to Spanish learners. No idea how many, if any, of these episodes are on there, but I'm sure some of them are. So with that out of the way, we will start. So the oldest episodes that I have here um, that I wanted to specifically talk about are a set of two episodes called El Vacío y Recién Llegados, which are two episodes from January of 2017 regarding unaccompanied minors immigrating into the U.S. So Specifically, the first one I think talks about the travel into the U.S. and, you know, the um, incredibly difficult journey that that is and then the time that is often spent in um, juvenile detention centers or whatever awaiting a decision regarding your status um, in the U.S. and that sort of thing. And then the second episode talks about a high school in California that has a large percentage of children or, you know, teenagers that are, you know, living with family or whatever, who mostly arrived to the U.S. as teens. This was such an enlightening episode in so many ways um, regarding just the difficulty, obviously, of this situation to be in, the um, adjustment that has to be made, like part of it that really, really stuck with me was a brief mention of like behavioral issues in the high school and how ridiculous it was for the teenagers who, you know, some of which had made these, you know, impossible treks, months long walks in groups uh, across the desert in Mexico with other people for the most part, but like strangers to them or not their immediate family members and so they've been independent in circumstances that are far worse than many of us will ever experience in our lives and then to go to high school and be told that you have to sit there and you can't go to the bathroom without permission you can't use your phone just like all these like micromanaging things makes all any and all behavioral issues um seem completely reasonable. So anyway, um, in general, those two episodes definitely highly recommend. Strangely, most episodes of Radio Amelande do not obviously center around the U.S., although the U.S. is obviously always kind of a looming figure in Latin American world. But, um, you know, these first three, for some reason, are all about the U.S., but um, the next episode is Soy Marron from March 21st, 2017. And this is about an immigrant to the United States who 
is living in the state of Maine with his wife, who is from the U.S., and they are kind of living there before and during the transition into Trump's America, which, like, obviously Trump did not create Trump's America, like, that was already there, and it just came to light, I guess you could say, but specifically in this episode, the main, the guy whose name I did not write down for some reason, um, t- talks about how different the place became for him, being someone who is immediately apparent as a Spanish-speaking, non- white perceived person in the whitest state in the U.S. and how much more hostile it became for him, how much more difficult um, life became, and just, yeah, very, very interesting, very sad um, episode regarding sort of um, U.S. culture. An episode that I enjoyed listening to so much that I really want to listen to it again is called Otro País from March 28th, 2017. And this is about a woman from Korea who moved to, I want to say Argentina, and had just the most wild experiences there, like accidentally got caught up in this nefarious business model. It just, it truly listened to like a movie or like a true crime book or I don't know it was really really entertaining to listen to um back to sad things um a two-part episode called Doctor Esto es Normal from April 2017 is about illegitimate plastic surgery I believe this was about Colombia I think but um it happens everywhere it happens in the U.S. and all over the world but about like an unlicensed um, person doing silicone injections and not using proper materials or techniques and um so it's about a woman who had this done and did not survive so it is very very sad but you know a very um impactful listen for sure a la distancia from november 28th 2017 is about uh, PTSD and veteran care, lack of veteran care in the United States, particularly for um, immigrants who go into the military, who are kind of supposed to have somewhat of a fast track to citizenship through doing that, and that does not always work out or is not always worth it to do. And so, yeah, that one, again, sad, but a really, really impactful episode. Hermanas from December of 2017 is about sisters. I believe one of the people in the episode, one of the sisters is a Radio Envolante journalist or employee, and she's just discussing basically how she moved to the United States with her dad, I think, as a like preteen, and her sister stayed in Mexico with the rest of their family, and they just kind of grew up apart essentially even though I think they were quite close before that and still stayed close you know up uh over a long distance but I mean I don't think it was like the smartphone era (laughs) at the time so you know definitely a lot more limited than you'd be now I also have sisters and I can't imagine having grown up separately from them but I also completely understand you know the motivations and stuff that she talks about in the episode so I think this was a very different episode for Radio Ambulante um style wise just because it was more of a conversation rather than like an investigative thing but certainly you know the themes and everything were very um topical and yeah it was just a it was a good listen from January 23rd 2018 um the episode Fue el Estado Um, is about journalism in Mexico, how incredibly dangerous and difficult it is to be a journalist in Mexico, all of the different, you know, political pressures from both, you know, the cartels and the politicians who are, you know, kind of aligned with the cartels. And so this was a very, very interesting episode to listen to. And I did actually end up buying the book for from the journalist who was in the episode i haven't read it yet but i definitely need a crash course on this world before i read it because i started it and there were so many names being thrown around as if i should know who these people are and i'm just not well versed on the history there so i need to watch a documentary or something first but um yeah 
very, very, very interesting episode. Another episode that was a slightly different format than the regular, I guess, is Sin Lugar Seguro from March 13th, 2018. And this is about an Airbnb host who was kind of sexually harassed or molested, I guess you could say, by a an Airbnb guest and kind of the non-traditional form of kind of justice that she chose, kind of almost like a form of restorative justice sometime after the event and everything. And it was, yeah, just very, very interesting to listen to and to think about. Uh, Postal de San Salvador, April 10th, 2018, is about this one woman's kind of just personal life experience living in San Salvador um, in, you know, daily crossing, interacting with territory of gangs in um, El Salvador and the way that that impacts even down to like your personal expression with your style, you know, being recognizable and essentially trackable. And I think this episode is especially interesting to listen to with a, you know, 2023 or 2024, whatever perspective, um, knowing what's going on in El Salvador now with Bukele. And, you know, obviously there are very, very strong opinions on both sides of that. And that's another Radio Ambulante um, podcast that you can listen to. Central is like their um, uh, mini series um, branch of Radio Ambulante. And they have a set of episodes on Bukele, um, you know, talking about the you know, essentially dictatorship that he has set up. And so obviously there are huge concerns with that and very, very valid issues. Um, but this kind of also, you know, listening to this with that perspective also makes you kind of understand why people um, were so willing, are continuing to be so willing to give up, you know, personal freedoms that from a, you know, privileged perspective of living in relative safety, we might not understand why that would happen. And that's not to say that it's okay, but I think it does really give a different perspective. So anyway, um, a very, very, very rough listen, but so, so interesting is No Soy Tu Chiste from April 24th, 2018. And this is about a comedy show in Colombia that is or was, kind of still is, what I can only describe as a minstrel show. Um, it was performed with blackface and um, per portraying a caricature, kind of the social backlash that this had to some extent, the social support that it had to some extent, and how they ended up sort of changing this to not be blackface-ish. Um, and so this was just so, so interesting to listen to. Again, there's definitely a lot of expression of racist ideas in this episode. So if that's something that will be a tough listen for you, I would keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, just very, very illuminating episode. Um, from September 25th, 2018, La Jurado Diez. I think that's what I have written down here. This is essentially like the Puerto Rican 12 Angry Men um, story. It was a very, very interesting episode about a court case in Puerto Rico. So, you know, a territory or a colony of the United States, which, you know, is kind of awkwardly under federal law, but not a state. And so they have their own laws as well. And the death penalty is not legal in Puerto Rico. There, It's not an option for Puerto Rican law, but it is an option for federal law in the United States. And so that had not really been in conflict for quite some time, but eventually someone was charged with a federal crime in Puerto Rico. And so the death penalty was on the table. And so this is the story of... Um, getting a jury of people from Puerto Rico to decide whether to do the death penalty or not. And it's a very, very interesting lesson regardless because of the, you know, lack of sovereignty for Puerto Rico and the imposition of U.S. law there. Uh, Postville, Iowa, October 23rd, 2018, is about a town, in, obviously, in Iowa that had a large percentage of residents who were undocumented immigrants and were working in a 
um, a slaughterhouse maybe? Some type of industrial plant. There was a massive ice raid, I think the largest one in history, and they were by largely all deported. It just essentially destroyed this town. I think that, you know, the overwhelming perspective in the United States um, is that undocumented immigrants are, you know, this huge burden on the system and, you know, regardless of whether that's accurate or not, that's certainly the perspective that exists. And so it was so interesting to hear more about how these kind of raids actually tear apart <laughs> the United States, like the specific regions that they happen in, about how they are terrible for everyone involved, regardless of whether you are undocumented or not. They destroy jobs for documented U.S. immigrants or citizens. Um, and just, you know, the impact that it has was absolutely wild to hear about. So not that that should be the primary consideration in these things, but, you know, certainly not a perspective you hear often in the U.S. So very interesting. Another labor exploitation episode in the U.S. Por la Feria, December 18th, 2018. And this is about, these are legal um, U.S. workers, so they are uh, brought to the U.S. on a temporary work visa, like a seasonal work visa, to work in fairs, so like county and state fairs. And it's like a similar one to the agricultural visa, but a different type, with the advertisement essentially of having um, well-paid jobs f for the season that they will work in here. And obviously there are U.S. labor laws, not as many labor laws as some places, but there are U.S. labor laws that are supposed to govern these things. Obviously that's not exactly what happens. This is, I think, quite a recent thing. Like I, you know, relatively recent. I grew up in the country, so I grew up going to county fairs, state fairs, and this was definitely not the majority of the workforce when I was going, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Just really, really wild to hear about how that, that world has transformed um, over the past, you know, decade or so and the ways that that it is a good opportunity and then is not a good opportunity. And so, yeah, very interesting. Uh, no Abras La Puerta from January 29th, 2019 is about a family, specifically a father, I believe, who was kind of in the news in this specific town in Florida, I think, for um, this encounter with the police where he was essentially parked on his own property in um, his own driveway um, with in the car with his child, I think, and they were trying to get him to get out of his car. You know, they claimed they were going to serve him this deportation notice, but they did not they couldn't produce it, um, and so he stayed in his car for hours and hours, um, essentially to force them to comply with the law because there was no, they had no cause to, uh, detain him, and so it was really, really interesting to hear in this episode, you know, obviously that's, like, probably a very commonplace thing for someone's rights to be violated that way, but specifically to hear about how his neighborhood came together, and, you know, to learn more about the rights of everyone, not just U.S. citizens or documented um, immigrants have, was, yeah, informative. So, man, I keep um, bringing up immigration ones, but there was, I think, a stretch of time where they were talking about this um, a lot. So, February 26th, 2019, J, J or Jota versus the United States is another one about, I think it was Border Patrol in this one, that a two young women who were uh, crossing the border into the U.S. were um, harassed, sexually harassed, um, and assaulted in the, like, border control facility and ultimately decided to pursue that legally and so it's telling that story and again obviously can be difficult to listen to but um a good episode and then our final pairing for this episode of radio ambulante favorites is a two episode series from um november of 
2019 called Jonena and El Transito. The first one is about one of the first children in Argentina to socially and legally transition, I believe. Um, so she, you know, knew from a very, very young age that she was a girl and told her mother and after some, you know, transition time of their family, you know, learning about this, which, you know, was certainly a very uncertain territory at the time I, around the world, I'm sure they mentioned at the time that the most resources that existed were in English, you know, not that there were that many there either, but um, just really not a lot of opportunity to learn about it. But once, you know, the mother was on board and everything, there was still the issue of this being pretty much unprecedented in Argentina, and so it became quite a big thing. And then the second episode is just a short one of people um, around Latin America sharing with Radio Ambulante their experiences of non-binary gender identity. Um, and so, yeah. Very good episode pair, highly recommend. So yeah, that is everything for the first set of years for Radio Ambulante. I feel like I think 2018 maybe was the year so far that I have the most things from. So we will see if that, if 2018 keeps the crown in our next uh, set of years. But I think, as I said before, I am midway through 2021 now. So once I get through that one, 2022 and 2023, we will be back for another round of favorites. Overall, I am just loving listening to these. I do, you know, take breaks, obviously, when I need to and because I want to continue enjoying these. But I don't often need to take long breaks because after a while, I always start to miss listening to them. So all the titles and dates will be in the description so that you can check them out. And I will see you in the next video.